But some of you just want to attend. So it's a pleasure to be here to share some ideas with all of you. But before I start, I would like to, of course, welcome you to this talk. And I also want to find out a few things about memory from you before I, I share something on this. Uh, can I ask you, how many of you think you have a terrible memory? How many of you think you have a fantastic memory? Oh, you yeah. have. How many of you think you have an average memory? Okay. Can do. Tom Bola. I think I lost okay. Come to all. Okay. Okay, what if I say that by the end of this almost two hours talk? You should be able to understand how you two can also become, not become Superman, but to have a super memory. Would you like to do that? Yes. Why would you want to have a super memory in the first place? You can find out as we go on. First thing to remember is there are three important truths in life. The first thing is about health. I'm sure all of you are very concerned about your health, aren't you? But remember this, your health does not depend on what you eat. If you ask your doctor this, does my health depend on what I eat? And I say, no, 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 it doesn't depend on what you eat. Let's say you go to bar, you go to Mway, you go to Causeway or whatever way, you know, got a, and you buy a lot of vitamins and this A to Z vitamins and you take every day, do you think you become healthy automatically? No. It's not that easy, is it? Because your health does not depend on what you eat, but it depends on what your body can digest. And another thing is, when it comes to wealth, this is what we want, isn't it? Health, life, and wealth. When it comes to wealth, there are two things. One is the amount you earn. Does your wealth depend on the amount you earn, or, or on how much you save? What do you think? Which do you think? Money saved, is it? Fact, have you heard of people who have become uh, not very rich, just because they are earning a lot of money doesn't automatically make them rich, isn't it? Have you seen a lot of sportsmen? People like Maradona, people like Mike Tyson. You know Mike Tyson? The boxer? Did he make millions of money or dollars? I mean, huge dollars. He converted to Malaysia even more money, isn't it? But today, he's broke. If he if all made so much of money, 10% 10, 10 of, of what he made, if we made, we would become a millionaire, million, multi millionaire. But he made a lot of money, he lost it all. So it's on what you say. And your wisdom is how wise you should become, how wise you become in life, does not depend on how many books you read, it's how much you can remember of all the books that you can read. Now would you, understand, would you uh, agree with me on this, that the more you learn, the more you can earn. Agree or not? If you want to earn more, you've got to Learn more. Now, some people ask me this. They say, you look at Lingo Tong and all that. He never learned a lot of things. He also made a lot of money. Do you agree? But today, can we follow his footsteps? Can or not? If can, then ask the children all to stop going to school. Become a lorry driver. Because Lingo Tong was once a lorry driver, right? And became a multi man. Is that a secret to be well? No. Every one of us is a PSC. Now let me ask you this. How many of you are working here? Working. Working people? Okay. Mr. Tan, right? Mr. Tan, where do you work? Uh, factory. Factory, yeah? Okay. Uh, let's say, what is the name of your factory, please? Mr. Tan, what is the name of your factory? Southern Wire. Okay, Southern Wire. Okay, do you? If I ask you, are you self-employed? No. No, okay. Most of you would agree with him, right? He actually works for Southern Wire. He's not self employed. But I don't agree with him, with, you, with him and with you because I say he's self employed. Do you know why? Because. The, the, reason, the reason I say that is because. The reason I say that is because he is a PSC. If you want to use a PSC, is it? 
A PSC means, now of course you're working for Southern Wire, I don't ask you how much their salary is, Mr. Tan. But let's say now Northern Wire comes along, competitor, and says, uh, Mr. Tan, we're going to offer you double your salary, and we're going to give you a BMW, to your chance. Okay. We give you a driver, and we're going to give you a condominium in, in Mount Kiara. Would you possibly take the offer? Immediately, okay. So that means you can't say you're working for Southern Wire, you work for yourself. Southern Wire today is your best customer for your services. Do you agree with me? You get what I'm saying? Now what I mean PSC is you're a personal services corporation. You're selling your services, uh, your personal services, which is your time and your knowledge. And that is why Southern Wire is paying you whatever salary is paying you, because it's your best customer. If, as I said, another company comes along and offers you, then the new company becomes your better customer, isn't it? So would you not sell your services to that new customer? Would you or would you not? You say, no, I work for Southern Wire. No, 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 for my life now, I'm going to be stuck here. No, right. Now, but to do that, if you want to increase your value of your services, let's say from, let's say you're earning 10,000 now, you want to earn 20,000, then you've got to change yourself. In the sense that you've got to learn more. And you say learn more, you've got to increase your ASK. You know what's ASK? He says ask. Yeah, before you can ask for a, a better salary, you must have what is called an attitude. You've got to change or improve your attitude. You've got to improve your skills. And you've got to increase your what? Improve your knowledge. Do you agree with me all of you? When you improve all these three, then your market value increases. And one of the things that is important is for you to improve your mind skills. That's what this whole program is about. Mind skills. In fact, Utah today conducts a lot of workshops on mind-related uh, programs. Like for example, in June we have a mind festival. It's all related to mind. Mental skills. Like you learn mind mapping, you learn memory skills, you learn speed reading, you learn creative thinking, a lot of things. And all this can help you to improve yourself in terms of your attitude, skills, and knowledge. But today, since we are going to talk about a lot about uh, memory, I'm going to concentrate on this, just on memory. Now, let me ask you this. Let's say, those of you who are studying, how many of you stay in college? Quite a lot of you in college. Most of you from the Utah campus and stuff, right? If, let's say, your lecturer comes tomorrow and say, okay, class, I'm going to give you this set of numbers, and I want you to go back and remember, memorize all these numbers, come back in one week, I'm going to give you a test. You must remember all these numbers in the right position. How many of you will be absent for the test? <laughs> Quite a few of you will be absent. Okay, if your boss were to tell you this, Mr. Tan, you, if you cannot remember these numbers, sorry, next week you come back, you, you don't have a job. Would you manage? I suppose you were there. Most of us are. You have to remember all these numbers? It's crazy because it's not possible for a human brain to remember all such numbers. Agree or don't agree? Agree. Anybody who tries to do this must be crazy. And I'm such a crazy guy. Because I've tried to remember them, and guess what? I've succeeded. You believe me or not? All you will hear is one time. You know, I was doing this in Singapore, I had a group of students. One of them was a standard five so students, like, in like, uh, Han Junior back. And you know what the boy told me? He said, sir, before we test you, can I ask you to do something? I said, what is that? Can you remove your glasses first? I said, what is that for? He said, maybe you can see reflections. Believe <laughs> that. Kids these days. But okay, the other day when I was about to say, and one lady, the only she said, Jaya, before you know, the C5 came out yesterday for the Magnum. <laughs> First prize, you know. I said, really? And she said, Jaya, you think you can predict uh, which one is the next one? I tell you what, I know. She said, ah, one of these. She said, ah, she said, one of these, but holy. But I said, I don't know which one, I'll tell you what, you buy all. Show one will slide. But don't forget me, I'll tell the same thing. All right, anyway. 
You want to test me, right? Oh, yeah. You need to bring my glasses on. Should I give you the idea? So now we are looking, so maybe something needs last. Okay, I'll pick it up. Just give the same sign. Okay, you can ask me any position, let's say H5 or C10 or A4 or D10 or whatever. Any, anything. Let me try. Just put my hands and just shout out something. I'll try to. Can't see where you're listening. G6. G6, is it um, 7040? Is it? Any others? Yes. Six I. Huh? Six I. Six I. Is it zero seven one six? Correct? No. No? Oh, no, no, no. It's zero. Is it zero seven? Yes. Zero seven four six. Yes. Correct? Okay. Can we try the other way around? Sure. That is a bit tough. That's a bit tough. I can't do, I mean, I'm still practicing that. Because I have to look for, it's, it's quite tough. Some, sometimes I get, sometimes I don't. But try, maybe you can try. I, I, I don't get it, but let me just try. It's medium. Uh, I think it's D6. Yep. Yeah. 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 Alright, okay. Now the reason I'm able to do that, why do you think I'm able to do that? I was born with a special brain. Do you agree that? No. You don't think so? I was! No, no sometimes I ask people, you know, how many of you here think you're a potential genius? None of you. You know, sometimes people tell me some very interesting things. They say, say, Jaya, you know, the geniuses are all people like Albert Einstein, Isaac Newton, you know. All of them are around today. Why do what? <laughs> and I'm not a way to You know what? How can I? You know that? Impossible. I tell them one thing. Who do you think are smarter, the white man or the Asians? Asians. Asians. But then I say you're a potential genius, none of you like, me, potential genius. Oh, you're very humble. We do things, we don't put up our hands. You know something? You know where yoga came from, which country? India, we all know that. Today, you know who is teaching yoga? The Americans. Guess who's learning? The Indians are learning from the Americans. You know how they do it? They get this sweet, young, sexy girl doing yoga on, on the CD. They, they shoot that on. Of course, they put some nice music and she goes, this is, this is you. <laughs> and what we need to buy and we watch. Wow, look at the way the girl is. <laughs> And you know something? Today, the white man has learned feng shui, and he's teaching feng shui to the Chinese. And Chinese are doing very well. You know what the, Chinese, the, the white man is good at doing? They take our things, they polish it up, make it a bit more interesting, and sell it back to the buy it. But where did the knowledge come from? Womanda. More they got. You see, ours. So don't ever think that you're in any way less than that. No, not in any way less. In fact, if it's asked you, you'll be better. In fact, they're all that modern medicine, you know where they came from? From the East. You know that? The ingredients. They take this, this, this small ingredient and put it in the tablet and send it back to you. Only thing we at the Asians, we take the whole leaf. Ah. <laughs> we, we get take all the leaf and then we leave. But they took the ingredients, okay? Right. Have you seen this guy before? You. <laughs> My good friend. He has the same name as me though. He was interviewed in the Star newspaper. Can you see the Star? The, this guy, Charles Fernandez, actually interviewed some of his students. You see what? I only need a what? Short time to study and understand it clearly. And Joseph Kyo says he learned to believe in himself. And other girl said, I used to get a lot of what grades? What grades that? C grades, and now he's able to convert them to A's. 
Now, this is what a student can get. And what about us? Oops. Okay. Why do you want to have a good memory? Now, I want you all to please stay calm with me. Eh? Tell me why you want a good memory. I mean, it makes no sense for you to learn something if it's not going to help you, isn't it? I mean, unless you're going to say, you know, I have a good memory. It feels so uh, you must, It must help you, isn't it? Why would you have a good memory? Can someone tell me why? Who is among? Are you guys? Study purpose. For studying purpose, okay. You want to pass your exams, alright. Can I say exams? Yeah. Alright, for exams. Cool, okay, cool. Two. Talk about exams, huh? Can I say something? There are only four kinds of students. Students who study hard and students who study little. You know what a student, you know it's a study hard student? These are students who actually burn the midnight oil. They study very hard. They have no time for other things. You talk about face, who's a word to you? Face and book. <laughs> What's the connection between face and book? See, did you watch the movie, the, the latest uh, Clash of the Titans? See, is that a, a chapter in physics or what? <laughs> Don't you feel like giving them a kick? You know, even they go to the toilet, they take the books on this one. They see the toilet, they're reading. And you know what they'll tell you? They say, why are you so crazy? You go to the toilet, relax. Ah, that's why I take the book. Ah. Because when there's no disturbance, you know, I'm all by myself. And these are the study hard students. And then they got a group of study little students. Let me ask you this. The study hard students, do they get good grades? They get. But are there some students who study hard and also get poor grades? Yes. Of course. Are there students who study little and yet get good grades? Yes. Of course, are there students who study little and fail? No. Yes. Correct. Now let's say this is group one, two, three, and four. Which is the worst group to be in? Three. Four. Really? Look again. One, two, 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 two. Can you have a show of hands? How many of you think is one? How many of you think is two? How many of you think is three? How many of you think is four? Four. Did you talk up? No, right? It's two. Why two and not four? Because the, the students in group 4, they don't expect to pass anyway. If they pass, they will be shocked. <laughs> they will be like, How did I pass? <laughs> Something must be wrong somewhere, but let me keep quiet about it. In fact, these students, if they get out of 7 subjects, let's say they got 3 C's and 2 B's and 2 D's, they will throw a party. They say, wow, I got 3 C's. I'm going to throw a party. But the students in group 2, if they out of 7 subjects, if they got uh, 2 B's and 3 A's and 2 C's, or let's say even 5 A's and 2 B's, you know what they will say? Oh my god, there goes my life. I don't feel like living anymore. I met one boy recently, you know. After the PMR results came out last year, I went to the house of visiting the father. And the father said, uh, you know, uh, my son just got his PMR result. So I, you know, as most people do, hey, hey, good, good, hey, how does he do? He said, very bad, uncle. Terrible. So I, I tried to console him. I said, come sit, sit down. It's okay, don't worry. Look, results are not the only thing that determine your life, you know. And I tried to console him. Then I said, by the way, how much do you get? Very bad, uncle. I only got six days in one week. <laughs> I was really stunned, you know. I didn't know what to say. I said, go what? I mean, one B. I said, forget about the B. Why are you not looking at the six A's? I said, that's okay, but I, I, I really want to get the seven. I said, it's okay. Life is not the end, you know. Which is the best group to be in? Do you all want to be three students? Oh, yeah. Then I'm going to help you with that. I, was, I wasn't planning to talk to students, but since a lot of students here, I'll also share some ideas with students, okay? On how to study. Okay, exam. What else would be uh, good for you? What would a good memory help you to do? Public speaking. Wonderful. Now, you know, there was this man who was coming to a big function like this. And he came on stage and he said this. Ladies and gentlemen, before, on my way here, God and I knew the speech that I'm going to make. And now only God knows. <laughs> <laughs> See, 
sometimes when you come in front, we actually forget our lines, you know? Right, so sometimes, he, he's just telling you, isn't it? How would you like to be able to speak confidently without any problem? Without referring to notes. You see, I don't have any notes in my hand. You, have, you, have you ever gone for a speech where you see somebody standing like this and says for the next 20 minutes or so, ladies and gentlemen, it's a real pleasure to be. It doesn't look very pleasurable to him. <laughs> it's a real pleasure to be here to share a few words on how to have a better memory. You know, once I went for a public speaking course and the guy was talking like this, I walked out. You mean you want me to be able to become a speaker like you said we had elected? I don't want that. I mean, I want to be in front talking to you all. I want to be your friend. I want to be have a conversation with you, yeah. isn't it? Not like, you know, who I am. Not all of you listen to people. <laughs> I don't think that's cool. I don't like that. And that's... No fun, no fun. It's all for all. You know, it's not. No fun, ma. If I'm talking about this, no fun, ma. You know, there was this Chinese, this, this Chinese educated girl who was struggling, you know, sometimes communication problem. She was struggling by her play and uh, there was this white man sitting next to her, Quello. And uh, you know what, like, Quello, you know, being friendly, you know, Quello always like you. So you're like, hey, hi, Quello. You know, she's like, uh, she said, you're going to England. <laughs> and she, she's going to see her brother to maybe take up a course or something, because after SPF, her brother's like, he said, come on, I see what, what course I can get for you. Maybe you can study with me, you know, see, stay with me, stay with me. So she was like, what are you going to do in England? Study law? <laughs> she said law is a very good subject. <laughs> the white man said. Law. In fact, England is where you should take law. She was a bit confused. How do you speak for law? Then she said, uh, he asked him. She said, but, but you're, you're traveling alone, you're so young, girl. you're traveling alone. She said, no ma. Where's your mom? <laughs> you mean she's sitting behind somewhere? No war. <laughs> Say no war where? In Malaysia or in England? <laughs> Sometimes people can really, really misunderstand it. You know? So you've got to be very careful when you talk. Alright, another reason, okay, public speaking is very important. Area, what else? What else can good memory give you? Relationship, wonderful. Nam Tai. How? How do you think your relationship can be improved by having a better memory? You remember the name. You remember the name, yeah, okay. So that you don't wrongly spell the name. Don't spell the name, don't even wrongly say the name. Yeah, just not there to say it. Come to our children. See, now, if you make a mistake when you call somebody by a wrong name, they don't like it, is it? And sometimes, you know how we all like to. Cover up. Hey, hi, brother. How are you? <laughs> brother. <laughs> hi, Tambi. Sometimes they will say, Name as a Tambi. Ane. Or Ape. Aso. Ati. Call somebody by name. Do you know something? As just now, Sally was mentioning, when uh, Malaysian, Malaysian Airlines was trained by me through Utah. This, not this campus, the other campus, uh, the other PG campus, well, CE actually organized a program for, and you know how many days we train Malaysian Airlines for five days? And I trained them for five days on how to have a better memory, and they were trainers, so that's why it took me five days. And they trained the cabin crew to remember passenger names. And guess what? After our training, the, the cabin crew remember, to could remember on average 20 names per, per cabin crew. Is that wonderful? So that means they serve you, uh, let's say, let's see. Gladys, huh? Gladys, right? So let's say the lady comes to you and I say, Excuse me, Miss Gladys, here's the orange juice. How do you feel? You feel good. And on, or when you're walking out, you say, Miss Gladys, thank you for flying to the airline. I hope to see you again. You go, Huh? Oh. You get what I'm saying? Would you be like pleasantly surprised and say, Thank you, eh? Hope to see you again. That's what they normally say, isn't it? You know, the name is, yeah, really, yeah, please. What else? What else? Fantastic. Very good point. What else? What if you cannot even remember the name of the person, but you can remember even his puppy's name? <laughs> hey, how's your 
Et tant pis, hein, euh, Whitey, lui, you know, il sait aussi qu'il y a des. Waouh! Ça va? Oups! Tell me, what else? What else can I give you? Sorry? A job, yes! In job, it would be good. Can you imagine your boss tells you to do something and then you, every time he tells you, he comes back, you forgot. Uh, by the way, uh, what's your name? Mayor? M A Y O R. I'm honored to have you here. <laughs> 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 Alright, so, okay. That is one way to remember people's name. You may follow the name, but, but in a nice way. You know, let's say, Mayor, you're working outside. Okay. Let's say your boss will give you some things to do, a list of things, you know, two, two or three things, and he comes back, and very important thing, and to, let's say tomorrow he comes back, man, have you finished all that? Actually, I forgot the boss. Your boss is going to promote you the next time, isn't it? Yes, very good. You always forget things. How's it going to be? That, right? So, sure, definitely. So, let me share this. <clears throat> can you, man, can, you, can I tell you that? Having good memory can give you a lot of confidence. As just now you all said, isn't it? It can help you in public speaking. If you become a public speaker and you don't have to refer to notes, would that give you a lot of confidence? Yes. Do you know something? I have taken part in speech competitions before, and I tell you the worst thing you can do if you're going to give a speech or going to take part in a speech contest is to memorize the speech word for word. And I have done that before, a long time ago, when I was still taking speech contests. And I have a friend of mine as well, his name was uh, Mr. Tio. He also took part in speech contest. You know what he did? He made, he was doing words. He, he memorized every word, the the, the comma, the full stop, everything. <laughs> so he went on stage. It's a competition, you know? More people than few people sitting. And the judges were there, you know? And he was very stressful. And this man said, Ladies and gentlemen, parenting is all the things. Let's see, there's roots written on the floor. <laughs> then he started parenting is... Parenting is... I don't know. <laughs> and he came back, he was sitting next to me, and he said, Jaya, I'm going home. He said, no, no, I feel so stupid. He said, why is it people looking? What do you think of? I said, hey, hello, these things happen to everybody. Don't take it personally. It just so happened that you, know, you forgot your mind. So what? We all human beings. And this one, he never came back. And, I mean, I was in a club. He never came back to the club. He got so to see. It's how dangerous can be. And even when I was taking back the speech contest, when I memorized my speech, I never won any speech contest. You know why? It was so like, uh, not, it was so canned, you know what I mean? There's no, you know, I don't speak from my heart. So you must be able to do that, which is to speak from your Hot. Okay. Next thing is it helps you in your, as you said, relationships. And of course, it also gives you a few of the students that cause exams as well. Now I'm gonna test your memories, alright? I'm gonna see how good your memory is. Are you all willing to take the test? No. Do you not mean? I don't think you have. But before I test your memory, would you want me to give you a chance to test my memory? You want to? I see something on here. Say this, you All right. Okay, I'm going to give you a test for my memory, but I will need a volunteer to come in front and write on the board. If no volunteer, you can't test me. Can I have a volunteer, please? Anybody to write on the board? You're volunteering her. You know, I thought only students have this disease, you know, it looks like even adults have some disease like this. You know what's a disease, huh? We Malaysians have a disease called the Hugo disease. Hugo disease, and then somebody asks the volunteer, he said, Hugo? Come on. Or somebody said, But I know these people who actually become successful in life are those who are the what? I go, not the ego, I go. Okay? The ego people are the ones that can I do that? Can I volunteer? Can I answer that question? Can I ask you a question? Can I? But there's one thing about the difference of population that compared to East Westerners. 
Although I don't like Western in some way, but some things I got to work. I'm going to admire them. They're very outspoken, you know that. If, if I'm talking to a, let's say, American audience here, and if I want to ask them a question, or if, if I say any questions, you know what they will say? Almost all the hands will be up to Jen. What do you say? How about this? How about this way? You know, why can't I do this way? But if I ask Malaysian audiences any questions, they'll go. <laughs> Understand? Everybody understands very well. Why not put up your hands? Why not? Be why? We have a wall At least I managed to convert one person. <laughs> I convert one person from a you go to an I go person. What's the name? What's the name? There's only one way to say a name. Is that ways? You may call her in one way. You know what? Give one way to this. One thing I want you to do is write down these words that they are going to give you. Alright? Here. And then they will give you some numbers, you write the numbers. They will give you. They will give you. They will give you. Would you believe me if I have given a 20 minutes speech totally in Cantonese? On why you must learn English? <laughs> of all things. <laughs> That's a school, really. They actually wanted me to speak in Cantonese on why you must learn English. If I asked them why it's such a crazy thing, call a Chinese fellow to talk. Nah. Why is yeah. <laughs> They say they want to give these students uh, a, a hidden message that another person from a different race can speak your language. So what's the big deal about you learning English? That's the message they want to give. Okay. So you think of course. Anyway, now, please give a word, any word, as long as an English word, and you can put, and she can put them anywhere. For example, you say camera on a LCD, or projector, or speaker, or whatever it is, and you say number seven. Then you can say uh, steps, number three. Puppy. Sorry? Puppy. puppy. What number do you want for puppy? One, two, one, three. Huh? Four. Number four is puppy, okay. Anyone else? Hardworking. Sorry? Hardworking. hardworking. Are you hardworking? <laughs> All right. What number do you want hardworking? One to ten, huh? Number eight is hard working, okay. Attitude. What number do you want attitude? Seven is attitude, okay. Acknowledgement. What number? Number ten is acknowledgement, all right. Paparazzi, two. Sorry? Paparazzi. Paparazzi, number two. Paparazzi and number two, sure. Paparazzi. The, the wheel. Car wheel. Alright. Don't reinvent the wheel. What number? Number one is wheel. Okay. Number one is wheel. Anything else? Number six. Isentropic. Okay, okay, okay. Sure. Isentropic. I S E N. Is this somebody's name? Uh, no. T R O P I C is a condition for process. Condition for? <laughs> process. Oh, Ison. Ison to shopping. At number six, is it? Okay. <laughs> yes. Equilateral. What number do you want equilateral? Huh? Number nine is equilateral. Okay. Number nine is equilateral. Okay. Yes. Yes. The oxygen level you can spell it. I would allow that. <laughs> no German words, please. <laughs> oh, English. Alright, okay, alright. How do you spell that? D E. What's the number? Three. Only left. Three. 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 Three.
Seven had two. Ninety-seven had two. Right. Eleven. Twenty-seven. Twenty-one. Twenty-seven. Twenty-one. At, at what number? And number three is twenty-seven. Three is twenty-seven. Okay.
Can I give you the words first? Can I give you the words, let's say, in a random order? I give it to you, even numbers backwards and then odd numbers forward. That's right. Number 10 is acknowledgement. Number 8 is hard working. Number 6 is... Isaac, Tropic. Uh, that was number six. Uh, number four is Puppy. Number two is Paparazzi. Is it right? Yes. Can I give one to ten now? Number one is Wheel. Number three is I give up. <laughs> okay. Dioxy, Reborn, Nucleic Acid. Correct? Number five is uh, lamb. Number seven is attitude. And number nine is uh, equilateral. Correct? Not bad. Not bad. I think you're number one. Number one is 79. Number two is uh, 97. Number three is 27. Number four is 98, right? And number, number four. Number five is 18, number six is 37, number seven is 47, uh, number eight is 73. Wow, how many have realized that number is okay? <laughs> Number nine is 21, and number 10 is 48. Would you want to learn how to do this? Yes. So that you can just stand on stage and do a demonstration. <laughs> Is it? Or you don't want to do that. It's always helping part of that. All right, sure. I'm going to do that. I'm going to help you do remember all these things, okay? But before I do that, let's just take a small test, right? I hope you all have got papers and pen to write. Uh, I'm going to give you all a test of 20 words. Then you're going to try and remember those words, okay? And the words are very simple. Try and remember those words. Take two minutes. I'll time you. Take a pencil and write down the twenty words in the same order. Don't worry about spelling in the case we have one or two spelling errors, okay? In fact, on the fourteenth of this one, we are having a mind competition. Those of you interested, come and take part in the memory competition. If you do well in this, and I share some ideas with you. Preferably by 
All you know is one finger up and one finger up. Does it work? Is it easy to find? Does it work? Why is it fancy? Is it easy? Now, just like that, we have to use an easy way, which is the imagination. Now, let's see how to do this. As far as my memory is concerned, memory is a skill that we can all learn. You know? And remember this, there are three steps when it comes to memory. One is called register. It's when your brain actually records the information that you are trying to learn. Or you're listening to somebody, or you're reading a textbook, or you're reading a newspaper, or anything at all, you're looking at something, your brain is doing a recording. That's what it's called register. Retain means is the process of remembering or putting it in the brain and keeping it there. You know, keep it. Retain it. Keep. And recall is when you are taking it out. Now of all these three steps, which do you think is the most important? How many things is register? How many things is retain? How many things is recall? Actually, the most important is register. It's how you register. Now, the only reason May was able to remember all the things was not because he has a, he's a great retention power, or you say, oh, he's very good in recording. No, he registered it differently from the way most of you would have done. Most of you went like, you didn't do that. He said, I saw this radio, this I don't think. A connection and he made a silly story and he didn't see it as it is a ridiculous story but it works. You get it? Yeah, so you you have to use that and you have to use your what? Imagination. Can only imagine there's an elephant right in front of all of you. Can you imagine that? Can't imagine. Your imagination is very rusty right? I don't blame you, you know why? In school, our teachers have helped us to freeze up our imagination. They put it in deep freeze. Now what I suggest is take it out and defrost it. Put it in the microwave oven and defrost. So now I can use my imagination a little bit. You know why? I tell you why. Example, there was this girl who was in primary school. She passed up an art paper. She did some art and she passed it up. The teacher took and gave her a D. Of course, obviously, the girl was very frustrated. She went, teacher, how can you do it? You know, for them, the bee is very, it's a terrible, it's like the end of the world. I don't think I deserve it. So the teacher looked at the girl and said, you silly girl, don't you know that? The, I told you that the sky, I, I gave you a color. I said, the sky is always one color? Blue. Blue, you and I know that the silly girl thought it's orange and red. She went and put orange and red, you know, and all over. And then when she went back, uh, and the teacher said this, she said, yeah, I know, teacher, you did say that yesterday, but you see, yesterday evening, my mom took me to the very ground, and I was looking at the sky, and I saw the sun was a very red color, and the, you know, the sky was orange and red. So that's why I came back, and I just followed what I saw. You mean the sky is wrong? <laughs> and you're right? <laughs> She said, took the piece of paper back and she said, okay, cross off the knee and gave me an elbow. Imagination. Don't ever say that you're, you see, you can be frosting. Okay, can you imagine an elephant all you? Can Just, just came in this way. Now, I helped you, right? Can you say white? And the whole elephant turns to white in color. A white elephant, you see that? You see that? You know that there was one man, they were going to say, train the people in Malaysia, and one man said, he said, Daya, I can never imagine a white man. I said, why not? He said, I've never seen one in my life. I said, neither have I, but imagine it. He said, no, I was trying very hard. I said, can you imagine painting it white? Uh-huh. <laughs> and let's say now you say, red dots, and the white elephant has suddenly got red spots all over. You know what I mean? A dot, a whole car dotted elephant. It's really interesting. Cute. And now you say, Tiny! And they say, eh? Where did the elephant go? And you come here and you saw, oh, that's the elephant! And you pick it up in your hand, you put it in your hand, and say, oh, look, cute elephant! <laughs> A white elephant with red dots, but so like, can you imagine that? If you can imagine, then imagination is working perfectly. Because when you imagine, you don't imagine, but you must also use your uh, dramatic sense. How to make something dramatic, make it ridiculous, that's what he said. Ridiculous, right? Make it crazy. You know something? Movies are crazy, don't you agree? 
That's the reason we watch movies. If movies were logical, none of you and I would watch. Don't you think so? The only reason is because our brain likes crazy things. Seriously. I mean, can you, can you imagine they say, uh, well, making a movie about King Kong that is a normal size? <laughs> Nobody would watch. The only reason you watch King Kong is because it's so huge. And the only reason you watch Avatar is because it's so illogical. Where you see the 14 mountains, remember that? Have you ever seen the 14 mountains in your life? Have you seen in Indian movies of the worst? Have you seen that? When they fall in love, they must dance and sing. <laughs> Have you seen that? Hindi movies and Tamil movies? Even the Indians always do that. Some, uh, some Chinese ones, he said, yeah, you really the Indians do this? He said, did you do that in your wife? I said, no. But the movies we watch, they said, they have this movie. So, use your mind to mention make it too much. And you see, whatever is unusual, let's say today, this is my hairstyle. Can you imagine I'm here? And when Thomas Shelby introduced me, I came from that and I did my hairstyle green color with you know, Trojan hairstyle green color. Would you ever forget me? Green color at all. You say, oh, you, many years ago I went to Utah, this crazy trainer, you know, came and stood on the stage, uh, funny, funny looking, you know, green color hair, I go and just, you never forget, right? Thinking is thinking. Now I'm going to show you how to remember these 20 items again because the more you think, the more you link, the more you can think. Okay, let me show you how to link. It's called a linking system, which is actually what it is. But probably, I make my story even more crazy than this. Okay, let's see how I do this, okay? Can you imagine with me that after this session, all of you go home and you turn on your radio? Turn on your what? Turn on your radio. Can you listen to the songs and let's say the songs are so crazy that you got so angry that you keep the radio? And you kick it so hard, you don't realize how strong you are. The radio starts flying up in the air. It's going higher and higher and higher. It's going, oh, where's my radio going? And it was going higher and higher. Finally, there was an airplane flying by. The radio went just in time and it hit and broke off one of the wings of the airplane. And now the airplane came like this. It took a nose dive and landed right in front of your eyes. There's a lamp hose in front of your eyes. You saw Huge lamp holes, the rebel came, and there was a big explosion. And out of that came a picture, the most famous picture in the world. You remember the one? You remember the picture? Half smiley, half not smiley. The lady, what's her name? Mona Lisa. And you know the guy who painted her, what's his name? Leonardo da Vinci. And let's say, do you know that the, the original Mona Lisa has got no, no what? Eyebrow. And let's say she is a modern Mona Lisa, so she's got a phone in her hand and she's calling this guy. He said, Mr. Leonardo da Vinci, when you drew my picture, you didn't put in my eyebrows. You know that? <laughs> so while she's talking, I go up to her and say, Excuse me, you must be this Mona Lisa. She put the phone on, so he has anything. I said, I'd like to welcome you to the 21st century with something you probably have never seen in your life. It's called a cigarette. Now, please take this cigarette. And she says, What can I do with this? What? See here, man. See here. This is how we smoke. You, I know you're not a smoker, but you know, just I, I'm a smoker, so people. <laughs> she coughs and she drops a cigarette on her chair. See, this lighted cigarette, it burns a hole on the chair. So she panics and she jumps on the horse to escape this from this crazy guy. And you know, when she jumps onto the horse, the horse panics and lays an egg. <laughs> egg broke, and inside there you found there was a teacup. A big tinker. And he said there's something inside, you shook the dress on how to tell a dress. And he gave it to Miss Jasmine and said, Hey Miss Jasmine, why didn't you find very nice? I think she'll look nice on you. And she said there's something inside and he shook the dress and thousands of flowers fell. And he took all his flowers and wife should I waste all his flowers. You decorated your window and you're admiring your window when the neighbor, who you got a terrible neighbor, you know what? Every time he sees you doing something, he's very jealous. He said, how come he's got so many flowers to decorate his window? So he took a big bottle of perfume and he threw it through your window and ended right on your science book. And let's say you now took your science book and you're smelling your science book. It's a nice smelling science book. From inside the science book, I'll do this of the bread. And now you say, wow, this is what I really need. And he took this guy and he took a big bite, but he broke a tooth because some idiot has put a pencil inside. And now you're in leaves. What can I do? So I'm looking for a piece of towel, a towel or something to wipe myself. And without realizing that, you actually found a, 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 a curtains, your mom's latest curtains, and you wipe yourself. Like, my 
I'm going to be dead for 